Welcome back to Rocky Mountain Marketing. I am so excited to bring you a new feature of Rocky Mountain Marketing. I am going to be sitting down with my business bestie, Kendra Swalls, once a month to bring you some of our insights to running our own businesses and some of the struggles that we've faced along the way. Hey guys, welcome to Business Besties episode number three. I am Kendra Swalls, business coach and podcast host, and I am here with my business bestie, Katie Brinkley. Katie, introduce yourself for us. I am Katie Brinkley. I'm Kendra's business bestie, and I'm also a social media strategist. I have been helping entrepreneurs develop a social media strategy for over 18 years now, and I'm also a podcast host. Excited for today's episode. The business episodes, these episodes are some of my favorite because I get to talk with you. I know they're so easy. It's so fun. And what you do leads perfectly into what we're talking about today, which is social media. And it's a pretty big topic, but we're specifically going to focus on kind of the effects that social media can have on us. And the fact that, you know, we're having to use social media for our business. So we need to be on it. We're, we're spending a lot of time on the platforms. We're creating content for the platforms. We're consuming content on the platforms. And that comes along with its own kind of struggles mentally um, with mental health. We've seen a lot of things in the news lately about you know mental health and social media being linked and all these different things. So we really want to kind of dive into how to you know, be able to use social media for your business without letting it affect you in a lot of like negative or adverse ways. So I'm curious just to start off, Katie, on average, how much time per day do you think you spend on social media? Oh man. So which platform? And, and I guess in (laughs) any and all, I do feel like, so for me and my personal social media, I try to spend less than 30 minutes a day. I know that's oh, wow. a, it is something that I've had to work into my schedule, but this is the thing, Kendra, none of us thought when MySpace was around that we'd be using it for our business. Yeah. This would be an incredible tool for us to grow and get our message out there and do business with people from all over the world, not just all over the state or the country, all over the world. And it has to be a part of our lives, but it doesn't need to be all consuming. And I think that for many people, that's where they it gets to be one or the other. It gets to be, I don't even use social media at all. Social media is terrible. I don't use it. Or they are spending two, three, six hours a day checking their Instagram feed. So it's one of those kind of double-edged swords on social media. You have to use it, but there are ways that you can strategize and have a strong presence still, but still not be spending all day on it. So I try to spend only 30 minutes a day for my own social media accounts, but I do feel like I'm a little bit different because I spend a ton of time on social media still because I'm managing and coaching so many different people and businesses with their accounts. So honestly, I really am on social media literally all day. Like I get that report from my, from my iPhone saying, Hey, your screen time showed that 26% of your day was on passive for social media. What about you? So I actually, when you were talking, I pulled up my screen time on my phone because I was curious because I know what I feel like I spend on social media. And obviously some days are more than others. So like yesterday I spent a little more time on Instagram than normal because I was creating like some stories and I was doing, creating reels. I was bad. It was a batch day for my reels. So that spent a little more time. But overall, my social media time, if I'm adding this all up, was an hour and 37 minutes. An hour and a half a day. It's not terrible. And this um, is the thing though, yeah. Kendra, you're the reels queen. So I, well, and you have if to I back that these up, reels. <laughs> that's true. So I will, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of edit what I just said. So I actually, yesterday was not my, my batch real day. It was the day before. Um, we're recording this on a Friday and on Wednesday, I bash. And that day I spent three hours and 21 minutes on Instagram alone, which here's the thing. You don't realize how much time you're spending because it's like, that's the point. That's what they I want know. from you. I know. And I have fallen victim to that because there are times when I'm like, well, I'm just going to go in and do a couple of things. And the next thing, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I need to be like focusing on other stuff. 
So I really like that we have like that Apple's added the insights. I don't know Androids, what they do, but for iPhones, like I think that's been really helpful having that screen time report. I know a lot of people, especially during the pandemic, when everybody was shut down, we were all home. Like everybody was like, just ignore the screen time report, but it really is beneficial to see in number form and to look at like, okay, overall I'm spending five hours a day on my phone, but like yesterday I was on my phone for three hours and 29 minutes, but I was listening to a podcast on Spotify for an hour and 20 minutes of that. So like, to me, that's not the same as sitting in like scrolling through Instagram, but green. Agreed. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. But at the same time, I think that it is very eye opening to actually go and see like, Oh, okay. So if I'm telling people like, Oh, I'm so busy. I don't have time. And yet I'm spending an hour and a half on Instagram, then that's probably not ideal. Well, and this comes back to what we saw a lot with social audio and clubhouse a year ago. When I sat down and I was looking at how many clubhouse rooms I was hosting on a daily basis, I was like, holy cow, no wonder I'm not getting any work done. I'm spending three hours a day holding summits and speaking. And it's not to say that it wasn't worthwhile. It absolutely was. And I have had the opportunity to meet some incredible people like (laughs) Uh, So, um, so, I mean, like it, it's not to say that that wasn't worthwhile, but I think a lot of people come summer of 2021, they saw, oh my gosh, you know, I've been spending a lot of time on this app. And that's why we have seen a decline in the amount of users on it. It's not to say that it's gone away by any means, but I think that people are being more strategic with their time because if you're spending three hours a day, which equals 15 hours a week, that only gives you 25 hours a week to get the rest of your work done. So anyways, I I digress. I think that this is one of the the more eye-opening things when Apple did introduce the screen time report. It kind of almost makes you feel guilty when you open it up and it's like, ooh, I really was spending way too much time on social media. And I have a little, uh, for the listeners that aren't watching this on on the video, I have this little box that showcases how many times you can hear it kind of clicking. So 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and I will flip it and oh. utilize that for, okay, I'm going to go in, I'm going to mess around on the gram for my business for a bit. And when it, the timer goes off, I shut it down. So that's been a huge key for me to kind of keep my focus because mm-hmm. as of Enneagram seven, I do have the, the shiny object syndrome, but yes, I, I definitely think Kendra, we're not alone with the struggles of social media and spending our time too much time on it. How are you managing your time, but still giving yourself in your business, the presence that is necessary? I think that's a, a, again, the double-edged sword that so many small businesses, entrepreneurs, mompreneurs run into is that they are, okay, I need to be on social media. So I have to create these reels. And now I'm spending three hours a day on social media. Yeah. Well, I think for me, what's been helpful is recognizing like the return on investment. And I don't just mean like monetary investment, but like investment on time. So what is the return that I'm getting on that time that I'm actually spending? So if I look at, you know, I currently run two different businesses. So I have my photography business and I have the girl means business coaching brand. So I learned pretty, you know, I guess a couple of years ago with my, I was spending all this time on my photography, Instagram, I was posting pictures all the time and stories and trying to really engage over there. And when I really went and looked at the data of where my clients were coming from, none of them were coming from Instagram. They were all coming from Google searches, client referrals, and a little bit from Facebook. And so I was like, why am I spending all this time on Instagram trying to build up this account that is really not benefiting me? I'm not getting the return on my time investment over there. And so I slowed down my you know, my time I spend, I still post occasionally. I don't engage as much. I just kind of have it as like a little, like extra social proof place that people can go and get information. Now with my other account, with my coaching account, it's the exact opposite. I would say 75% of my clients come from finding me on social media. And so I can spend more time on Instagram And I can spend a little more time on Facebook knowing that the return on my time investment is going to be a little bit higher because that's where people are finding me. That's where I'm connecting with people. That's where I'm having conversations with people. 
that's where I'm sharing my you know, resources and content. So I think that that's key is really to understand, you know, what am I getting out of this? Am I putting all this time in, but that's not really helping me, you know, grow my bottom line, or am I putting all this time in because it's helping me grow my bottom line? So that has been a big indicator for me is to say, okay, I'm willing to invest an hour, maybe an hour and a half a day. If it's going to result in me getting one or two new clients. Yeah. That's worth it to me. I mean, it's not costing me anything. Why not? Mm -hmm. But this is, this is Kendra. Where do you draw the line between this is my strategic outreach for so in social media versus going down. You had a great post a couple of weeks ago about Are you spending time on social media, actually creating the content Mm -hmm. and engaging for your business, or are you mindlessly scrolling? And it was a great post. I scroll back through the girl means business feed to check it out, but it's true. And I think that a lot of times that's why I've set the, have the timer set is how, how do you separate that? Okay. I'm going in to engage or to create content for my business and prevent yourself from going down the, the rabbit hole, which Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, all of them want you to go down that rabbit hole because the more time that you're spending on the platform, the more money they're making. Yeah. I think your timer idea is really good. I do that occasion. I'm not as good. I may need to get one of those little cubes because I've done it before where I like, I'll set a timer on my watch or on my phone before I go into the account. But a lot of times, honestly, it's times I don't even realize that I've picked up my phone and done it. It's when I am uh, maybe like this morning, it happened just this morning. I was in Canva. I was working on creating a new carousel post and I got kind of stuck on like what I wanted to to say. And I was getting frustrated. So I mindlessly picked up my phone and went to Instagram or when you're sitting at a red light and you're like, okay, or where I live, we're always stuck at train tracks. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to be here for a good three minutes. Let me pull up my phone and, and pull up Instagram. So I think first thing is, becoming more aware of those times. And then also like I try when I go into the app, I try not to start off with scrolling. I try to start with having an intention of like, what am I going into this app for? If I'm going in there, cause I'm going to post a story, then I make sure that I do that. Like I'm creating the content before I consume any content. So it's kind of like a, a self check, you know, it's like, have I created something worthwhile on here? Have I engaged, sent a DM, responded to a DM, posted a story, posted a feed post, a reel or whatever. And then after that, I can say, okay, now I'm going to go maybe consume for a few minutes. But again, I'm, I'm not the expert at this because I, I do fall down that rabbit hole. Um, well, so it's alone. a work in progress. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Social media by itself has a reinforcing nature. I mean, yeah. it uses the brain's reward, the dopamine hit you know, when we get a like, when we get a comment, when we get somebody engaging with us, it gives us that excitement. Again, that dopamine hit of people like me, and it gives you that reinforcement of what you're doing is resonating with people. And it's, these platforms are designed to be addictive. They're designed for you to want to, okay, well, I haven't, I'm just sitting here. I might as well just open it up and and check things out instead of just sitting there and watching the train track trains go by, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, the problem is though, is which we want to talk about on today's episode, they're designed to be addictive and they're associated with a lot of mental health issues, anxiety, depression, and with so many people being on social media, over 69% of adults are on social media, 81% of teens are on social media. And that's scary. Puts, it is scary. And we, we, we both saw a amazing YouTube video that really kind of inspired this episode. And with teens being on social media with adults, so many adults being on social media, it puts all of us at risk for feeling more depressed, more anxiety, and more stressed about these apps that are on our phone. And I know it probably is a little weird for me to be saying all this, but I think that when used in moderation, when you are using them for your business and thinking about them as a tool, instead of as that pleasure app, things can change and you can still have that great balance. So I'm going to pass the mic on over to you here, because I I think it's something that we've, we both use for our business regularly, but how can we be mindful of where social media is starting to go. Well, I know like I see a lot of people talking about different strategies that they have with this. And 
I do think one thing is just awareness. You know, what is that saying? It's like knowing is half the battle. Like you, like the fact that we are aware and we're becoming more aware as a society of the effects that social media has. You know, there was that documentary, The Social Dilemma on Netflix it's a year, two years ago. It's fascinating. And like, it talks about all these things about how, how much social media is in our brains. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy how well they know our habits, our behaviors, what we do, when we're going to do it, how we're going to do it, all these things. This, well, Kendra, the, I just want to stop you really fast yeah. right there because exactly what you said. I mean, I have my, I don't even want to say it because it'll turn on my ALX e or <laughs> A-L-E-X-A. It hears what I'm, what I'm saying. And mm-hmm. even though she hasn't chimed in yet to say anything back and ask me if that's the song I want to listen to, or if I want to add it to my cart, she's sitting right here listening to everything that I'm saying. Yeah. And our, we, it's, it's naive of us to think that social media is not doing the same. I mean, as a social media marketer, one of the best tools that I have is knowing your website browsing history. So if I'm promoting a launch for somebody and you're a motivational speaker and you've Googled in some day in your lifetime, you've Googled Tony Robbins, I can target you. Yeah. And that's the thing where it, it's great sometimes um, with the Apple rollout that we saw last year. It makes things a little bit harder for us as marketers to get the right ads in front of you. But I mean, there's a reason why if you Google new sunglasses, all of a sudden you're seeing ads for Sunglass Hut and Ray-Ban yep. in your feed. Well, what's even scarier is it's not even necessarily what you Google. I've had times where like I'm having a text message conversation with a friend group and we'll make a comment about a vacation we want to go on somewhere someday in the future. And the next thing I know, all six of us are getting ads to that location on our Facebook feeds. I mean, it's as much as we say that we don't want that. I want you to think too, about the fact that like, it's not all negative. I mean, I have this backpack I bought that I absolutely love. The only reason I found it was because of a Facebook ad, because I had been searching for great backpacks for traveling and laptop backpacks and stuff. And it gave me an ad for this company that I would have never have found before. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about kind of the, the negative side of things that there is a positive side to it. And I really do think that if you were to ask people, would you be willing to give up a lot of the technology that we have right now in order to, I guess, disallow these companies to have this access to our information I think you would find a a vast majority of people would say no. Like, I think that we are subconsciously or consciously agreeing to say like, yeah, that's fine if they want to read my text messages, if it means that they, that I get to have access to this incredible global free platform. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the price that we have to pay. But I want to go back to the video you mentioned, because I think that, so the video and, and it's by Virginia Kerr, it's on her YouTube channel. It's, she's talking specifically about TikTok. However, the same concerns are valid across multiple platforms. And I think that she voices the concerns that we maybe all have had, but have not really put into words all the time. And one of them was what we just talked about, like the fact that things are showing up on the for you page of her TikTok that she's like, I've never even voiced these things out loud. How does it know that that's what I want to see? I think the other thing she brings up, which I do want to touch on is the fact that she does not allow her children to be on social media or on TikTok. And I think that that has been a little bit of a balance that I have as a parent have had to deal with is that, yes, I am using social media for my business. My kids see me on my phone. Mm -hmm. My kids have played with the filters on the Instagram and on some of the TikTok filters when it first came out. But I am adamant that my children will not be on social media until I feel like that they are emotionally capable of handling it. And Mm -hmm. I don't know when that will be. I don't have an answer or a number to that, but my oldest daughter is in fourth grade and there are already kids in her class who are on TikTok, and that terrifies me. Mm -hmm. So I also think that there is a bit of this catch 22 of like, well, we are using it for our business. And we're on these platforms and yet we're like telling our children, no, you can't be on there too. It's a struggle. Like, and I know your, your kids are younger too. So we don't have that problem just yet, 
But I think a lot of people listening who have older kids might be kind of struggling with that same idea of like, well, how can I be telling them no when I'm spending all this? I'm walking proof of how addicting it can be. Well, in addition to addicting, FOMO, fear of missing Mm -hmm. out. If you're not on social media and all of your friends are, you know, that are going to be saying, oh, what what if I'm missing out on the jokes and making connections with other people and I'm going to be missing out on invitations to do things. I'll be missing out on all of these experiences, and it can cause even more anxiety and depression because you're not on social media. And I think that that is one thing that we need to be mindful of is setting those timers, setting the, the time for you to be in front of a screen, to be engaging with people that you're not currently with that. And I, it is something that I am still consistently trying to work on not being in front of my phone, not being near it when I'm with other people turning on one of the, again, Apple has done a lot of great things with trying to give some uh, work life and technology slash life balance back to people with the focus mode. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I turn focus mode on when I'm at the office and then I turn uh, personal mode on when I'm at home and I only get certain notifications from certain apps and certain people. And And I will say like, I, and I will, this is one thing I know you're good at because there have been times where I will like, again, I have, you know, insomnia, so I don't sleep very well at night. So I'll have an idea and I'll be like, I'm just going to text it to her really quick. And it's, you know, maybe 10, 11 o'clock at night. And I go to text it to you and it will send me a little thing that says she has notifications turned off. Of course, then it gives me the option to notify her anyway. And I'm like, (laughs) well, I'm not going to be rude, but sometimes I might be, but I, I do agree. I think that they are taking steps in the right direction to give us control back. Cause I think that's part of the problem is you hear all these stories and like the, the documentary, the social dilemma. I remember watching that and like being a little bit terrified at the lack of control. I felt like I had over these apps and what they were doing to me, Mm -hmm. but there are things coming that are being put in place because people are having conversations just like the one you and I are having now. And the ones like, you know, Virginia Post in her video and the documentary, and there's other documentaries similar to that, that they're trying to put more and more controls in place so that we can have our own control back. You know, Instagram just uh, releasing that they're going to have the feed options so that we now have more control over the content that we see when we log into the account. And I think that's going to be huge for some people to be able to say, I but only want to see, see these certain things. Go I'm, ahead. I'm going to... F- be devil's advocate Go for advocate it. here. I think it's going to cause people to spend even more time on the app because they're going to be checking every single feed to uh, see like, okay. okay, these are what my followers are doing. Now I wanted to see what Instagram thinks that I should be doing. And then now I'm going to, you know, so I think it's going to cause people to spend even more time on the app, but I don't have the new feed yet. A couple of my clients do. So we'll see how it, how it goes, but I, I definitely think that it's, I think it's going to cause more, more time to, to be spent on the app. That's interesting. Cause I hadn't thought of it that way. I just, I had thought of it more of like, cause one of the things that I do when it goes back to like, how do you control the time you spend is I'm very particular about who I follow. You know, I don't just follow anybody that follows me or anybody that reaches out to me because when I log into Instagram, I want to make sure that the content I'm seeing is content that's actually going to be valuable to me in my time. Because if I only have, if I'm trying to only spend a limited amount of time, I want to make sure that the content I get is not just random, you know, stuff that I don't care to see. So that's where I was thinking that the feed option might help. Cause then I can specifically say, I want to see these things first. And then if I have time, I can go focus on the other things or go check the other things as well. But we'll see. I'm, I'll be curious to see how that actually pans out. Well, I think that one of the things again that that inspired that this that inspired this episode was Virginia Kerr's YouTube video, her removing TikTok from her phone. I also have removed TikTok from my phone. I never was really using it past April of 2020, anyways. But I think that do an audit on where you are at with your time spent on social media. If you're spending it to engage with your friends, your family, your community do it strategically, do it mindfully. Don't just scroll just for the sake of scrolling. If you're on it for your business, you utilize that time as you would be using it for promoting your business on other, for emails, for lead gens, for sales calls, treat it the same way. 
But I think that we all just need to take a giant step back and think about how much time we are spending on these social media platforms. And is it worth the ROI that is taking away from our families, from our friends and from our true connections that we're having in the moment? Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Rocky Mountain Marketing. As always, I'd love to hear from you. You can visit my website at www.nextstepsocialcommunications.com, connect with me on LinkedIn, or check me out on Instagram. Let's keep taking your marketing to new heights.